So, Lord of the Rings. Since its first publication in the 1950s, it's been the standard in fantasy storytelling against which all else is measured. Surprising, really, that it took until the early 2000s for someone to make a film about... Look, I really like Lord of the Rings, but this series is supposed to be about films based on, about, or thematically reminiscent of computer games. I, I don't really see how Lord of the Rings fits. Sure, there have been games since the films, but nothing inherently gamey about them. Oh, it's not about Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh, I, I see. <clears throat> Dungeon Siege! A game series I have no recollection of. Must still have been playing the Diablo 2 expansion at that point and got an RPG blindness. No matter. By most accounts, it was a pretty damn good series with engaging stories. Bold KG Productions swallowed up the rights to make a film inspired by the games, and in 2006 we got this. Small history lesson. Bold KG is the production company belonging to... You? Yui? Uwe? Bol. A German director who's gained fame mostly through picking up cheap licenses to video game properties and making cheap, quick, low-quality films, and then challenging critics of his work to boxing matches. Yep, hell of a guy. This stellar reputation, other films in the series conspicuously abandoning the pretense of being connected to the games, as well as a notable downgrade in the cast choice, certainly paints a picture before even seeing the film. But there's quite a cast present here in this first one. Jason Statham, Ron Perlman, Burt Reynolds, Ray Liotta, Lily Sobieski, and John Reese, mother loving Davis. Surely at least one of their agents read over the script and tried to warn them against this? Oh well, should at least give it a chance, I suppose. The story starts with Jason Statham as Farmer, a simple farmer in the kingdom of Ebb, whose son is killed and wife kidnapped by the aggressive and animalistic Krug. Farmer then sets out on a mission to avenge his son and rescue his wife, whilst also saving the kingdom and finding his destiny. Even writing this out feels like a Mad Lib guide to writing fantasy stories. Ugh. Anyway, there's also a good wizard and a bad wizard and a plot to assert the king of the land, but are you even listening to the plot at this point? It would be possible to get an interesting or enjoyable film out of a trite story with talented filmmaking. Part of the problem, though, here is the acting. I mean, like I've said before, there's some talented actors here, but you wouldn't believe it looking at most of their performances. It feels like each and every one of them has been explicitly told to give the blandest performance of their lives. And the visual direction doesn't help to give any emotion to the lines being said either. A couple of performers do subvert this somewhat. John Reese davies gives an okay under the circumstances performance, and... Statham emotes as much as he does in any other film he's in. But the piece de resistance is Matthew Lillard as the king's nephew Duke Fallow, who plays the duke as a spoilt, childish and crazy, and proceeds to chew the scenery in every scene he's in. He's one of the only enjoyable things in the film. Things are progressing according to plan. I cannot wait any longer! But that is when you can hear what's going on. I mean, I swear I missed at least a quarter of the dialogue when the lines were fumbled or the soundtrack overwhelmed what was being said. That is especially prevalent in the fight scenes where another issue presents itself. The camera has the Michael Bay problem of shaking so much it obfuscates what's going on. It's a confusing choice in itself as behind the camera wobble is some good stage fighting going on and why get Jason Statham in your film if you're going to try and hide him during your action scenes? My goof about confusing the film with Lord of the Rings wasn't just a lazy joke either. One of the early scenes is eerily reminiscent of looking into Mordor or Industrial Isengard and then it cuts immediately to Farmer's Farm with Shire music from Lord of the Rings playing. This isn't even mentioning the Krug's resemblance to Orc, which is even more disheartening from an adaptation standpoint, as, as even a quick Google search I did of the source material threw up quite the bestiary of creatures that could have been included in the film. Oh well, missed opportunities. Besides some of the proper nouns used, there's nothing I can really identify to connect the film to the games. Pretty appropriate, really, for a film that only announces that connection in its subtitle. All in all, there's nothing really to recommend anyone seeing here. No one looks like they're having fun making the film. I couldn't have fun watching it. I even had to resort to rest an excitable Jack Russell Terrier in the final act to save myself from boredom. Oh, uh, one more thing to mention. The story strings in the film aren't even properly tied up. Not that it matters, the film just stops really abruptly. 